Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some of which I grew up with, and some of which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're looking at Death Chase XE, which was a 2013 entry in the famous Abuk Software Contest, uh, which is a European software competition that happens every year, focusing on not just games, but also practical applications of Atari computers and that sort of things. So the game itself is a Atari conversion of the famous 1983 ZX Spectrum game Death Chase by Mervyn Escort. It's a very well-known game on the Spectrum for its first-person perspective and illusion of trees coming towards you and that sort of thing. And that's the effect that the creators of this have tried to recreate with Death Chase XE. So this version was very well received and it achieved sixth place in the competition, which is a pretty solid achievement in such a competitive challenge. There's normally quite a lot of entries each year and for it to achieve sixth place is uh, pretty good, pretty good. The, the developers actually ran out of time to implement all of the features they wanted to put in the game before the deadline for the competition though. But they got some good feedback from the well-known Atari forum Atari Age. The original intention was for an expanded version of the game to be released in December of 2013. So after the contest had been over, they'd spent some more time developing the game and uh, adding these new features that were missing. But unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any sign of this enhanced version. There's a bit of activity in the game's thread up until about 2016, but there doesn't seem to be any subsequent versions of the game. There's an interesting version that you can actually connect to the web and upload your high scores to, but that's about all I can find. So, anyway, let's go have a look at Death Chase XE. Okay, here we are with Death Chase XE, a uh, Abac software competition um, entry, sixth place winner. And this was, um, as far as I'm aware, this was sort of composed using a bunch of sort of special techniques and bits and pieces. And you can see that on this opening credit screen. We give it a moment to cycle around. So HSC system X BIOS is the big thing that it uses. I don't know a lot about this, but it's something to do with um, sort of allowing much more in the way of um, input output devices of doing clever things. And I think the use of X BIOS is uh, one of the ways that this program can actually interact with the web. So there is a means of um, actually uploading your scores from this onto the onto a website. But here we are. Um, there's the story, which is probably going to scroll by too quickly for us to see. Let's give it one more cycle round and see if we can actually read it in time. These screens are using the Atari's high resolution mode. You know, mighty 320 by 202 colors. After the Great War, the European continent is ruled by mighty warlords in constant conflict over territory. You are one of the elite... Blah, blah, blah. You ride a bike and you shoot things. If you've played Death Chase on the Spectrum... That's what you can expect here. Press fire. All right. So, like I say, this was based on the 1983 game by Mervyn Escort. Um, and yeah, we just begin with a day patrol. You push up to start going. And your job is to avoid trees and shoot bikes. And that's pretty much it. You can also try and shoot those vehicles that are appearing in the background, like the helicopters, and there's some tanks appear later on as well. But your main goal is to destroy the bikes and not hit the trees. Oop, which I'm doing very badly at. Come on. Alright, so you do a day patrol and then you do a night patrol. Which isn't really any harder, it just looks a bit different. But it doesn't actually reduce your visibility any more than in the day patrol. It's, it's just a, a means of sort of separating out the levels and making them a bit more visually distinct from one another. Warlord says, it's simple, avoid the trees. The Warlord, you enter in Sector 2, second day, a piece of cake. Alright, let's do it. 
<laughs> right into the tree. Okay, that was pretty poor. I'll hold my hands up and say that. Let's put my aim in. Pete. Alright, try again. So the main differences between this version and the Spectrum version are the music, for one thing. The Spectrum version just had that sort of um, standard iconic Spectrum clicky noises going on, as I recall. Whereas this one has got a full pokey soundtrack. Um, this was actually one of the things that uh, the people on the Atari Age forum commenting on this game gave it a little bit of criticism for. So there, there were some people saying that they would have preferred maybe the music to use just three of the Atari's four sound channels. And reserve a fourth one for doing some sound effects. I kind of agree with that to an extent. So it's it's nice to have sound effects as a means of giving feedback to the player. Particularly in uh, a game that involves shooting and dodging things. It doesn't ruin the game by any means, certainly. Oops. Um, and also one of the things that they didn't have time to implement before the deadline for the Abbott competition uh, was any sort of death sequence or death animation. So you'll notice when you hit a tree, you just stop. Nothing really happens, there's no explosions, there's no sort of flashing, there's no sound effects. Nothing like that. That is one thing that the author said that they did want to um, implement in an updated version. But like I say, there's, there's sort of been no sign of that updated version online. This version that I'm playing here is the one from the Homesoft archive. Um, which is not a complete archive of everything available for the Atari 8-bit, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, but I also think that this, this version is perhaps not the most up-to-date version. Like, I know this version doesn't save high scores. Um, whereas there was a version you could download from a link on the Atari Age forum... Where you can save your high scores. But I, I couldn't get that download working for some reason. It didn't appear to be actually online anymore. Which is a bit of a shame. Or maybe it's just moved. Oh, we got the music's actually changed. That's cool. As a, a lot of these games that have impressive music... Um, oh, we're back to the original music now. <laughs> I was about to say, a lot of these games that have impressive music, they tend to have one cool tune that plays for the entire game. Like, if you think back to when we played stuff like X8 a while back, that was a good example. So that, that had a cool pokey tune, but it was the same all the way through, and it got, it got a little bit tiresome after a while. But it seems this has a bit of variety to it that might might be based on your performance from the look of things. Alright, much better score that time. Let's go again. So, I, I don't know a lot about the history of the original Death Chase game. Um, I just know that it's, it's one of those games that Spectrum fans are very fond of, with good reason, because it's a cool game. Um, and it's an impressive showcase of what the Spectrum is actually capable of. Because it, it's easy to make the assumption that the Spectrum was sort of one of the least capable 8-bit home computers at the time. And in some ways it was. It was especially limited in the sound department and, um, to a certain extent, the graphics. But Death Chase was a good example of how it could use those limitations to its advantage. Which is how you really master using a piece of hardware. Is recognising its shortcomings, and rather than attempting to hide them, you embrace them. Oh, this wasn't a different piece of music. It's just a later part of the same piece of music. I see how this works. Uh, 
The longer you survive, the more of the music you hear. A cool piece of music, eh? You're entering Sector 3. Concentrate and eliminate. Yeah, the other thing the Atari Age people were suggesting that they implement into this game was some sort of sort of competitive race mode. Um, but the authors quite rightly pointed out that the engine for this game isn't really built for that. Because it's not really simulating moving and turning through a 3D space and following a course. What it is doing is basically simulating moving from side to side. In a lot of ways, it's quite similar to um, early arcade games like um, Space Harrier. Is a good game you could compare this to. Because that's a game very much about moving from left to right and avoiding obstacles and shooting things. Yeah, this is a, a, a fun game that's good for a, a quick blast. And it's a good showcase of the Atari's abilities. It might have been nice to see a bit more in the way of colour. Um, and I'm actually not 100% sure... If the colour is quite right of this, because you might be able to see around the edges of the screen, you can see blue and green borders. That kind of imply that the graphics in the middle of the screen should be blue and green as well, rather than the shades of grey. Um, but I'm not sure, it's kind of hard to say. There's certainly no other graphical glitches or anything like that, so... It, it doesn't look like it's working incorrectly, so... I don't know, though. Oops! This has been a very good run so far. Oh, God! It's getting it very tight now, though. I was just thinking earlier, this doesn't feel like it's getting that much harder, but yeah, now it, now it feels like it's getting quite a bit harder. <laughs> it's keeping the speed up, eh? To its credit. Like, look at the number of trees on screen and look at how well it's keeping the speed up. Like, we're not getting any sort of slowdown or anything like that, and... The more trees we've got, the more convincing that 3D effect is. Oops. I think it's all over. Alright, let's have one more try and then we'll wrap it up for today. 46,171. Not bad at all. Last try for today then. Yeah, this is fun. One of those games that's sort of ultimately a bit limited, but it's enjoyable to play if you've got a few minutes to spare and you just want to play something where you can blast out a high score quickly and enjoy some funky pokey tunes. Or just admire what the Atari is capable of in the hands of modern programmers.
Nice. Getting the hang of this now. I tell you what, it's nice to be able to play this game with a, a controller. There's one thing that I always found a little bit difficult to get on with on the Spectrum was the fact that most games used a keyboard control scheme by default. A lot of them did support joysticks, but for Spectrum, for some reason, very few people actually had a joystick. Oops. That's easy to look away, won't it? Yeah, to use a joystick on a lot of Spectrum models, you needed external adapters and stuff, so a lot of people didn't bother. But this was also a time where um, control schemes hadn't really been sort of standardized. And so you get games with absolutely bizarre control schemes. Like, um, recently I was writing an article about games with isometric perspectives. And so I had a quick look at Ultimate Play the Game's Night Law, which is sort of the defining influence on uh, isometric games. And the control scheme in that is so weird. So basically what it is, it, it, the bottom row of the keyboard, every other key makes you turn left and every other other key makes you turn to the right. The second row of keys on the keyboard, all of them make you walk forwards. Um... And the top row of keys on the keyboard, every single one of those makes you jump forwards. And then you use any of the number keys to pick up and drop objects. It's just such a bizarre control scheme when when you consider what we're used to now and what's become standardised. But then you also need to consider that what is the standard keyboard-based control scheme these days... WSAD and so on only came in with Quake which was what well, late 90s must have been I forget exactly what year Quake came out and it was, it was something like 97 98 or something like that um, because it was what it was while I was still at secondary school um, but yeah that standardized control scheme we have now hasn't been around that long in the grand scheme of things and so yeah when you go back to a lot of old games that use keyboard control you have to uh, you have to really get used to the way they do things thankfully this doesn't tend to be the case on atari games most of them support joystick by default which is fine by me anyway i think that's enough of death chase xe for now as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects moegamer.net where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today and videopackgames.wordpress.com which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 video pack computer also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Thank you.